Hello, welcome to the Arterra Wines Vertical Tasting Experience. Today, owner and winemaker Jason Murray will lead you through three vintages of the Cabernet Franc. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. All right, welcome to the Cab Franc Vertical Tasting. We have 2015, 16, and 17 Cabernet Franc to try. As a quick review, Cabernet Franc in Virginia and its natural weight and balance is a medium weight red wine. This is its response to the moisture that it pulls out of the ground during our ripening season. We don't do anything to modify this in our cellar practices. Instead, we embrace the individual characteristics of each grape to show its true expression in our area. To go through the tasting that we have today, we have Stephanie and Ryan Barnett. Stephanie works with me, so she's right next to me, and Ryan is approximately six feet over. Uh, so we are going to simulate your tasting experience. Thank All right, wine one, 2015 Cabernet Franc. We'll give it a sniff and a taste. I'll describe to you very quickly the 2015 vintage. There isn't actually that much to describe because my notes are that it wasn't an especially unique year. It falls into what I would consider to just be an average normal Virginia year, which might be rare, but that's the case. This was also the second year that we had uh, some significant winter damage across the vineyard, so crop levels were very low. What that led to was some pressure to make sure that we picked instead of having extensive hang times for risk of birds, uh, raccoons, other predation. So this falls into what I would describe as more of a classic Bordeaux balanced, a little closer to um, the picking timing of maybe some of the other wineries in Virginia that shows it has uh, some brighter components to it, very fresh fruit, a lot of vibrancy, energy, great flavor, great aroma to it. Um, so, what do you guys think? Yeah, I definitely got hit with the fruit right away. So, really, really great on the palate. Um, just really could enjoy a lot of that. Wine number two. We have the 2016 Cabernet Franc. Take a quick check on it. There is a difference in this wine compared to the first one. Some of this is going to be the vintage year. Some of it's going to be some evolution in cellar practices. I have this one recorded as being uh, a relatively ideal season that uh, we had pretty much a dry summer, a nice bit of rain that came in early August, right at Eurasian, when you're kind of looking to help keep the vines keep going, and then dry through the rest of the harvest season. We were still picking on the earlier schedule at this point because we still were suffering lower crop yields. Uh, so I would like to see the ripeness levels, hang time potentially a little bit longer. But what's really neat about this one compared to the 2015 that we tried first is that this was the vintage in which we started to use the insulated covers on the fermenters at the end of the fermentation to trap more of the heat in for extraction. So what we definitely get in this is a, a richer, a little bit denser, definitely a bit more tannic extraction in this wine. So if you want a wine that goes towards a little bit more of a grip intensity within the medium weight style of a Cabernet Franc, that's definitely what this one is showing us. Any comments? You know, I, I noticed the tannin a little bit more in this one than in the uh, 2015, but both very smooth. Very smooth. All right. Okay, wine number three. 2017 Cabernet Franc, here we go. All right, so just to note, this is our current released vintage in what would be the tasting room if you were allowed to come. But it's showing its signs of youth, but for where it's at, I think this is an exceptional wine because a lot of things came together. So the advantages the first two have over it is extra time in terms of maturity, filling themselves out in their volume, their complexity, um, more complex characteristics to it. This one though, in its youth, came from what I think is a really good season. It was an early spring, which sometimes can cause its problems, but I think we did okay getting through this. 
uh, good crop levels once we got into 2017 because the Seven Oaks Vineyard where this fruit is grown had um, crop levels coming back after recovering from the 2014 and 15 winter damages and we were starting to pick at the Artera Estate Vineyard. So with more fruit, we had more capacity to risk some getting lost to birds, raccoons, whatever wanted to eat it. We also put bird net on the vineyard starting this year and all this facilitates longer ripening that I really get excited about. So the ripeness level in this vintage I think is exceptional and what I'm looking for. It was a bit of an interesting year though because it got really cool in August and that made me wonder if the uh, ripeness was going to get where we needed it to, but we had a really warm, humid October season that complicated some things in terms of the dampness, uh, but really I think just pushed the ripeness levels up and over the edge. This again has the greater uh, heat of extraction at the end of the fermentation with our insulated covers on the fermenters and so lets us pull that same tannic grip with extra ripeness in the fruit. I think this one just really comes together. Very fresh, this is delicious. Yeah, really enjoy it. Very approachable. Um, again, the fruit is just hits me first, so I'm a big fan of this one. All right. So when people join us in the tasting room, um, oftentimes with our reds, I find that they're most familiar with Cabernet Franc, um, just as a varietal that's out there that they see a lot in Virginia. But it's not one that I um, know a lot of the kind of origin or history about. So do you have anything um, that you can share related to the particular regions this come from or anything in particular about its history? Yeah, so Cabernet Franc's interesting grape. Uh, it is grown up and down the East Coast and was one of the most early adopted Vinifera or European wine grape varieties on the East Coast because it's one of our more winter hardy grapes and it's one of our earlier ripening reds. So it's something that we've been able to do and have early adoption and that's where there's a lot of it. It's been around so people are familiar with the name. It's really interesting because in a lot of ways it is internationally kind of looked at as like, you know, the, the uh, lesser counterpart to Cabernet Sauvignon, which is actually one of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon along with Sauvignon Blanc. So I find that interesting. Another kind of uh, lesser known fact about Cabernet Franc is it's originally indigenous to Italy. So it's not even a French varietal, it's transplanted into France. Apparently conditions are quite good for it though. And then it's grown in several different uh, regions in France. It's grown in the southeastern uh, region of Bordeaux as you get into um, what ironically is a little bit warmer climate to it. And it can make like a richer, fuller Cab Franc in that environment. It's also grown a lot up in the Loire, which is cooler and it makes brighter, fresher, fruitier wines a lot through the Loire. Most people would be familiar though with the difference of East Coast Cabernet Franc to drier climates like California when you have those dry climates with their heat and they have that early fast ripening uh, and makes a bolder more intense Cab Franc but it doesn't have the delicacy and fruit flavors that we get with our little bit longer cooler uh, fall conditions that we have here in Virginia. Okay. Is it easy to manage here in Virginia? It is really important how it's managed. Good question Ryan, especially in our mid-Atlantic climate. A lot of people are familiar with Cabernet Franc has that greener herbaceous or green bell pepper characteristic to it and this is a direct result of your balance of the vegetative part of the canopy to the fruit load that you're carrying. The grape Cabernet Franc exacerbates this characteristic uh, that is present in all wine grapes and all reds but it's definitely notable feature more in Cabernet Franc. And it's all about balancing the vine. So what we do to make sure we balance this properly is our yield control measures and ripening control measures actually start in May when we remove any excess shoots. And when we remove an entire shoot, we remove the flower clusters that would be grape clusters at the same time. So we're removing everything proportionally at the beginning of the season. A common practice would be to grow a lot more shoots to try and have a lot higher yield to make sure everything's safe and we have enough and the production is there. And you have a big bushy green canopy 
And then if you feel like the fruit's too high, you're gonna go through later in the season and drop off fruit. What happens then is this exacerbated imbalance because this green characteristic, this bell pepper character is developed in the green tissues of the vines and is translocated into the fruit during ripening. And if you have an excess of canopy with a reduced level of fruit, it's actually concentrating that green characteristic into the fruit. Whereas if you have the canopy and the fruit level in balance, then it's just a matter of ripening time to be able to hang it long enough for it to build up and then break down that greener characteristic and shift over towards the dark berries, darker, richer fruit characteristics that we're looking for in our cat farm. And starting in May, that's how that helps balance that out. That's the way that we do it. It's a higher risk uh, approach to it, but being more proactive, favoring quality, that's the timing so that by the time you actually set fruit going into June, we've already balanced the canopy and the crop load. We've reduced the overall crop load to make it far easier for each individual vine to focus on ripening a lower level of fruit. So very proactive approach.